I can only visit briefly today. <sighs> Hello, Kush. Hello. There are ceremonies going on that I must attend. Very good. But I did want to say hello. I was aware that you were coming today. I'm writing about sleep, Grant. Do you have any insight about sleep? Sleep is essential, of course. I know, I know. I... Especially to humans. We can get away with less sleep than you, but still it is essential for us as well. I understand that higher self connects to my experience in the sleep. Is it right? Yes, he can. Is it the main function of the sleep to get uh, restructured and uh, connected to your higher self? There's many reasons for sleep, actually. One of those is to restructure with yourself. However, it's rarely done in the sleep to restructure yourself. You need some outside forces for that, yes. Um, one of the reasons that you sleep is to re-energize the energy areas in your body and bring more color into your system and of course you can do that when you're awake as well but you can do that in a very vivid dream you can replenish your colors did you know that i'm i'm not thinking in, in terms of colors it's kind of empty mm -hmm. symbol for me oh but i can't see the colors so it's empty symbol for me i understand that others see colors but i don't see much of it actually i saw it once yes but you exhibit them uh, yeah, when I did Reiki on someone, I saw blue color, but yes. it was only once. It's only once. Could be. Was it a dark blue or a light blue? Medium, medium blue. It was probably communication, peace and communication, both blue. Uh huh. Darker blue would be opening of the third eye. I can tell. It was only once. So sleep is for energy. Yes. But, you know, I assume that sleep goes trans-dimensional. Sleep is the most yes. trans-dimensional experiences of daily life. Yes, you can change dimensions in your sleep, yes. And many people do. Many people leave their bodies in their sleep. But you see, you're protected with sleep because nothing can come in while you're sleeping. And the reason that is, is because there's no stimulation. You, do you know what I mean? Yes they would have to stimulate you to come in and they cannot come in without waking you up. So, they're, you're protected in your sleep. Uh -huh. So, but you can leave your body in your sleep and that is most normal. So, so and I'm trying to think of other things that sleep is good for, but it's, it's multifaceted really. So many things. Anything new about the colonies? I didn't learn anything new today. Um, they're making that a telepathic colony as much as possible. Because they learn so much more through the tele telepathy than they do any other way. So I'm worried that children without adults are not well manageable. Who is managing the children? How do they take care of them? Um, the, the children that are there have some telepathic abilities, so they can control them with telepathic suggestion. Oh. So they're not, they're not misbehaving. They need mothers. They need some female energy. They need... Uh, the lady speech. that is taking care of them is a woman, yes. One is not enough. You, you, know, you need two, three... They do not want the distraction of too many adults right now because the children are coming along and are actually comfortable with one another. How so about teenagers? Teenagers. They only go up to 12. 8 to 12. 8 children. 8 to 12. 8 children is, or 8 to 12 children. No, 8 to 12 is their ages. 8 children, they said 8 children and 4 adults. And one, yes, and 5 adults. Female, actually, 5 yeah. adults. It's okay, but you know, children need women and they need you know, nannies. They need a couple more. They need a couple more. All right. They have, they're listening. <coughs> well, they have noted that in the children, <coughs> they do ask for their mothers, of course. Yeah, you need females. You know, who would take care but, Teenager or older or grandmothers, they need someone to, be, to feel comfortable. 
just human children need need adults. But they're realizing that, I believe. Yes. Because of the things are getting telepathically <clears throat> from the children, they are starting to realize mm -hmm. that there's some inadequacies there. But however, with the the with the children's needs, mm -hmm. they get so much information because they mm -hmm. find out what they need from their mother, mm -hmm. from all the different telepathic thoughts they are sending mm -hmm. to their mother, mm -hmm. because that they are very willing and able to do that. Mm -hmm. So they're learning quite a bit from that. So actually, they probably won't bring in a mother for at least another few days. All right. Uh, is this dude coming through today? I don't know. How is it he doing? He's very busy as usual. Okay. And a very important figure since his promotion. His is, security level up high. Is it a new promotion or the previous one? The previous one, but it was quite an elevation. Okay. More than I originally had thought, so... All right, all right. How other colonies are doing? The other colonies are... The, Nina's colony. Let's uh -huh. go there. Nina's colony is doing very well. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that are 50-50. And they are doing phenomenally. They interact very well now. The aliens and the humans are friends. So, yeah. and this is something that was looked for many, many years ago, but mm -hmm. never was found. Uh -huh. So, Science but since, but you see, you have given a lot of the reasonings behind how they got that far, so. And the size of the colony? Is 12. I believe it was 12 okay. last time. All right, all right, all right. Any problems I could address quickly in any of the colonies? Um, in Colony 2, where the movie makers are, uh -huh. um, there are some artistic differences between aliens and movie makers. <laughs> All right. Um, artistic differences. <laughs> that's right. what I would call them. They want to do things quite differently. So, right. I, if you could give them maybe a, a little understanding of how they can work together a little better because um, they're taking what they've learned from the telepaths and trying to fit it into this scenario but with highly creative people it doesn't always work so because they have a, an extra sensory perception about what they're looking for visual visually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if they're not telepathic aliens cannot know their vision so if you know what I'm saying yeah, uh, do both ways, mm -hmm. follow both, you know, let, let each one create their own project. Yes. And help work together for different projects with different styles, and then run them by audience and see how the audience react, and that will teach you everything. So, it's empirical way is best. Empirical. Empirical. You don't argue just do it it's easy to do video recordings and then run them by humans and see how the humans react you have colonies other colonies actually you don't have that many but maybe you can borrow some humans on earth okay vision is listening to this bring them up show them the thing and ask them for opinions and also see how they react yes and they're they were definitely having some not seeing eye to eye so we are, but they have made about three hours or four hours of usable. All right, usable is fine, but it's not. But any, no, but seventy or eighty hours of unusable. So very a lot of wasted time in their both of their eyes. So out of this seventy hours, take best pieces, run them by audience, and just learn. You have to learn. You have then this team has to learn by experience. Well, they are. They're sort of doing that. They're ter they're hooking people up to a machine that gives a, a mental response to what they're visually watching. Excellent. So that they can know which parts of this the visual mm -hmm. things are affecting people in, in what ways. So to start being more productive, start small. You don't mm -hmm. really have to show the aliens to teach humans. Mm -hmm. Do 
humans telling to the camera their experiences up there. That is easy. So what what's wrong with that? That's you know that's an easy way of doing things. It's frightening for them. Why oh, not? Oh, okay. Um, you have to understand the fears of aliens versus the fears of humans doing these things and how they interact and the things that seem very, very strange to one species or very, very common to another species and how their uh, perceiving actions, a handshake can be threatening to a, an alien and, and, a, <laughs> and a smile can be threatening to an alien. You know what I mean? It's like showing your teeth or something. Uh -huh. I, it's... But um, they're coming along, but it's, it's a, a rough process. And aliens bark, and that's a, a way to say hello. And it's, it's, not, it's frightening for humans because it's like a very ugly sound for them. So it's, um, it's like uh, they're, they're offended by them saying hello, and then they run away, or they, uh, they scream, or... Um, so are they watching movies and YouTubes? The aliens and the humans have to sit together and spend some time watching YouTube. Oh, they they have done that, and they both have decided that they hate YouTube. So um, they have um, gone back to it a couple times, and hopefully that it'll go back to it again. They're because they fight about what well, is they, being the visualization. You see, it's offensive to aliens, but agreeable to humans, and sometimes you, the things that are offensive to the humans is agreeable to the aliens. Uh, it's... Okay, my point is, YouTube is the main path for free, censorship-free information. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's most popular. Yes. Some Minecraft videos have millions of views in the first days after they are made. So this is one of, you know, of course television is another one. You know, someone who is, can, can scroll through YouTube videos and television videos should pick few best which he thinks he should share with others. And they have to all sit together and, and watch those and comment on those and understand why those are popular. And what do they teach humans? Oh, that's the other thing. They're learning each other's language, a little, and that's coming along so-so. And movies, like some of them, I recently watched the movie Contact by, I forgot the name, Movie Contact, uh, by the same who made Back to the Future. Oh, yes. It's mm -hmm. an amazing movie, so rich, so powerful, so great, you know. Take mm -hmm. this movie, watch it together, and, and learn from it. That's... Is that one the one with the big gyroscope in it? Yes. Ah, I remember that one. And so, so that would be a gold standard. I guess that is the best movie about aliens uh, I ever saw. Learn from it. Make it as rich as... One of the lessons to learn in this movie, there was no moment when... No dull moment ever. Everything was happening all the time. Information was flowing and flowing in a way which is entertaining. This movie is immensely entertaining, as, as, as well as Back to the Future. People cannot go to pee because things were happening all the time. That is a gold standard for modern television, although it was made 20 years ago or so. So I guess there is a lot, of, a lot to learn there for everybody. They are calling me back. Thank you much. Much love to you. Oh, I have a, uh, what's it called? A conference, a meeting, and the... It's important. Very good. Have fun. Oh, uh, much love to you. Thank you. I have to go. I hate to leave. I'm enjoying our conversation.